We're going to continue our little brushback series on the teams. We're going to try to cover every single one of them. We did the six that we have issues with as far as 2023 is concerned a couple days ago. Some teams that, uh, you know, might be in no man's land from yesterday, the Giants, the Brewers, and then teams that might be on the rise as far as the year goes. That is the uh, third of the five-part series as uh, we get a little closer to spring training and uh, get through the football and pay our attention now to the baseball. The five teams that I have written down here, let's take them one by one, that I think have an opportunity maybe to do some damage and maybe be in the periphery of some postseason chatter in 23. The Angels, believe it or not, are one of the five teams. I mean, I know they have had buzzards luck. They have been big-time disappointments. They haven't been healthy from a everyday standpoint. Rendon never plays. Trout's been hurt a lot and everything else. And they do have the looming Otani contractual scenario to figure out, which is going to be tricky. Because I'm not sure if he's going to want to put up with being in the Angels. They don't win enough with the Dodgers and Yankees and teams like that sitting there. But at least right now, on this January day, we can look at optimism as far as California or Anaheim is concerned in 2023. I think they made some good moves in this offseason. Tyler Anderson, maybe he's found himself a great year last year. They gave him a three-year contract. Or Shellers a pretty good third. Or Shellers a pretty good little third baseman. I think he's going to help them defensively. He hits a little better than you think. I didn't follow him that carefully last year in Minnesota, but I'm a fan of him. Renfro had 29 home runs last year for the uh, Brewers. Red Sox the year before that. He's a good player. He's good defensively. Here he had a little pop to what has been a very anemic bottom of the order the last couple years. Estevez, the reliever from Colorado, did some nice things last year in a setup mode of Daniel Bard. So from that standpoint, if the Angels can get any health with the big three, and of course they use that six-man rotation, we understand that, and those young pitchers continue to develop a little bit after Otani, the Angels might be a lot better off than you think as far as 23 is concerned. Are they going to win the division? No. Uh, do they have to, you know, look at themselves no better than third right now in the AL West? Probably yes, with Seattle and, of course, Houston ahead of them. But I think the Angels have a chance to be uh, at least somewhat more competitive and maybe come uh, the second half of the year with a chance uh, to be one of the six in the American League as far as the postseason is concerned. Team number one may be on the rise. Team number two is a no-brainer despite the division. That's Baltimore in the American League East. He's a good manager. Hyde is. They had a great year last year. They got a wonderful farm system. Six of the top 100 prospects. We got a little peek of the two of them last year, of course, in the infielder, Henderson, and, of course, the catcher. The pitcher is going to come up here down the road, too. They got some young players as well. Would I like to have seen them do a little more in the offseason? Spend a little more money? Get a real big-time guy in there? Yeah, probably. Uh, they, I guess, uh, not feel they're quite yet ready to explore free agency. To add that one component, and their pitching is a little dubious. But the Orioles got a lot of young players, pitchers in the minor leagues. A little experience as far as winning is concerned. A little more magic at that great ballpark down in Camden Yards. Uh, tough division, I understand that, but they won over 80 last year, or right around there. I think Baltimore's got a chance to be halfway decent, maybe out of last place uh, in the division again because they should be better than the Red Sox. So the Orioles would be number two. Number three, of course, is Texas, who, you know, did what the Orioles may have thought about doing and, of course, spending a ton of money on pitching, whether it's DeGrom, Evaldi, uh, made the trade for Odorizzi, I mean, they did some brought back Morton Perez. I mean, they did some things from a pitching standpoint. Bochy, of course, he didn't come cheap either. He's a big-time Hall of Fame manager. He's going to help just by being there. Uh, they got a good GM there, of course, so who I think will do a very, very good job there. And Chris Young, owner's got deep pockets. They got a middle infield from last year. They spent a fortune on and $600, oh, $500 million. You know, listen, if DeGrom is healthy, Evaldi, it could be a good number two man. It's a health. I'm not sure if they can get to 25 starts out of the ground, but if they do, you like Evaldi. Obviously, if he's healthy, he's good too. John Gray sitting there. Uh, you know, listen, they brought enough pitching in. They're tired of being a last place doormat in this division. Uh, I'm not ready to say they're going to jump from, you know, basement to uh, first place, but I think Texas, just by rote, with the manager, with the rotation, should be a lot better. And the Grom, if healthy, I mean, he's the best pitcher in the sport. That's a lot of that's a big if. But if he's healthy, that's a shot in the arm right out of the gate. So they're team number three. The two teams in the National League that I like, one is Arizona. Last year, basically 500 baseball, the second half of the year on. A young outfield, uh, a couple of young pitchers. Manager's pretty good. 
uh, you know, I, I sensed that they were on the come at the end of last year. Played spoiler role very well at the end against the Brewers. You know, they got to keep the second baseman healthy all the time. Maybe Lingoria play a little third base. That will help them, too. You know, they are enough starting pitching. You know, Merrill Kelly and folks along those lines. This team's got a chance here to be a halfway decent ball club, I think. They got youth. They got young legs. Good ballpark to hit in. Now, the division is a disaster. Don't get me wrong. I mean, winning that division is going to be hard. San Diego and the behemoths with the Dodgers in there ahead of them. That is somewhat of a concern. But right now, you can make the case easily that they're the third best team in there. I'm not quite yet ready to say they're going to challenge for a postseason spot because when you're third in a division, hard to envision postseason when there's only six going in the, in the league. But I think Arizona's got a chance to be good. They got youthfulness. They made the trade with Toronto. That might help them a little bit. Uh, so I keep an eye on uh, Arizona as far as the year is concerned. And then finally, the Cubs. We've spent a lot of time on them already this offseason. You know, they brought in some good additions. No great player. I don't think there's a player that you can build around. There's not a pitcher that you can build around. They're all basically number three starters. But they got a lot of them. Tyone, Henrik, Stroman. They got a lot of them. Smiley. So, I mean, you know, uh, again, there's some depth there, some decent quality. There's no ace, but uh, it's, it's competent starting pitching. And then, of course, when you're sitting with that lineup, you bring Swanson in there. You got, you got obviously, Osborne maybe to play a little first base. Cubs finished the season winning 12 of the last 15. Manager's good. They know they have a lot of money to spend when the time comes. I think the Cubs got a chance to be decent, and the division is not impossible. Not a lot of great teams in NL Central. Cardinals are pretty good. Brewers might be fading. Reds and Pirates are bad. So the Cubs have an opportunity to be more competitive than you think. Cubs in Arizona in the NL. Arizona's got a tougher, a tougher haul because of the Dodgers and the Padres. Those teams are not standing in the way as they are, uh, as they are not for the Cubs. And then in the American League with the Angels, I like the additions. He's done a good job as the GM uh, with the little moves he's made. I think that is a, as a positive. And then you throw and the idea that, uh, listen, the Orioles should be halfway decent in Texas, spent a fortune. Those five of your teams, as far as 23 is concerned, my list back in December, maybe on the come, maybe on the rise in 2023. Alana will edify. Good to have Miss Rizzo in the house on this busy Thursday. And she says hello, Alana. The floor is yours. How are you today? Go ahead. Uh, good. Thank you. Good afternoon. I think my case for the Angels is it seems like their starting pitching behind Shohei Otani, their amazing two-way player, is starting to fall into form. Patrick Sandoval, Reed Detmers, Jose Suarez, to name a few guys behind Shohei Otani. Hopefully they don't have to lean on him as much on the pitching side of things. Now, my case against the Angels, Chris, is that they always seem to have to rely too heavily on their two major stars. You think about Shohei Otani and his health, of course, Mike Trout, and his health, how long Will he be able to be on the field when he's out there the best in the game, Manning center field for the Angels? And also, to a certain extent, you have to rely on Anthony Rendon, who still hasn't lived up to the contract he was given when he came over from the Washington Nationals to the Angels in Anaheim. Hopefully he is healthy. If those three are healthy, their pitching can withstand. I like the Angels this year a little bit more than I liked them last year. Remember, last year we thought it was going to be the year, 2022, that they made it to the postseason. As far as the Cubs are concerned, my case for the Cubs is that they added some good veteran presence that is used to winning. They added Dansby Swanson, of course. I know you said he's not the star player that a franchise can be built around, but I love what Dansby Swanson brings to the club as far as the lineup. He's always good for a clutch hit, a timely hit, and I love the way that he plays a defensive shortstop. You also have Cody Bellinger. I understand it has not been the Cody Bellinger since 2017. It hasn't even been the Cody Bellinger since 2020. But if he gets it together mentally and he can get his swing right after recovering from that shoulder surgery, he's a good presence in that lineup and he's still very, very good defensively. You also have Eric Hosmer at the end of his career, but still a good veteran presence. And don't forget Trey Mancini, who of course was with the Orioles for a long time, wins a World Series with the Houston Astros. He's in that lineup as well. Now, there are wins for the Cubs to be had in that division. I don't see the Pirates and the Reds going anywhere. It seems like the Brewers might be going in a little bit of a different direction, even though they do have tremendous starting pitching. I just don't think the Brewers have the offense to continue to compete like they have been uh, in the last several years. My case for the Orioles, it's a team that we have discussed is flush with young talent. You have all of this young, exciting 
prospect and young rookie talent that uh, is in that lineup. Cedric Mullins, of course, Adley Rutschman, Gunnar Henderson, Ryan Mountcastle. My case against them is I just don't think that they have the starting pitching, even if they bring up Grayson uh, Rodriguez. So those are the three in terms of your five uh, that I'm looking at right now. Diamondbacks, I'm not concerned about them as far as NL West because I just think that division is too difficult with the Padres, the Giants, and, potential, and obviously uh, the Dodgers in there as well.